the rupee. A gem able to advance many of Link's various quests in the Legend of Zelda series. This mysterious mineral is found in all the nooks and crannies, and is able to power the most legendary items. However, it seems like each of the timelines result in some sort of economic decline. What controls the circulating supply of rupees? How do the economies change after the events of Ocarina of Time? What dangers could cause economic collapse? I am Moxie, and this is Heavy Speculation. I was not expecting such overwhelming support from the first few videos. I have been an obsessive Zelda veteran since playing Minish Cap at 15 years old. I'm almost 30. And I've been holding on to a lot of these theories. So any response has been really exciting. And I'm looking forward to making many more. With that said, the following theories will definitely be more crackpot. As per the title of the series, sometimes there won't be a ton of evidence. However, I feel like the Zelda community needs more fun, speculative theories to add to the conversations around these games. This series is just getting started. If you are interested in this kind of content, consider subscribing. It's free and it helps a ton. Let's get started. Rupees are the main circulating currency in the Legend of Zelda series. They are used for nearly all goods and services in the lands of Hyrule, the Dark World, Kohulun Island, Termina, Labrina, Holodrum, the Great Sea, the World of the Ocean King, New Hyrule, Skyloft, Lowrul, and Hytopia. Rupees are found in grass, ceramic pots, bushes, trees, and in rocks. The Pecoria are likely responsible for rupees hidden in this manner. According to the Forest Pecori figurine item description in Minish Cap, quote, not visible to the eye of adults, they delight in making humans happy by hiding helpful items and rupees under grass and rocks all over the world. The Bloopy from Breath of the Wild drops rupees when hit. Many theorists speculate that peaks implies they have infinite amounts of rupees and they create the rupees. All Peak says is, quote, if you desperately need rupees, you should shoot an arrow at a bloopy. I hear they drop lots of rupees if you hit them. It is hard to draw that conclusion from this, but it is some sort of explanation on how rupees are quote unquote printed. They can be collected by defeating enemies, which begs the question, are they carrying them or are they releasing the magic that they carried. We will come back to this question. Rupees are also mined from stones, ores, and boulders in various games, typically found in volcanic regions. Rupees seem to possess some kind of magical properties. They can power the rupee armor from Twilight Princess and the magic armor from Wind Waker. The Great Fairy Fountain from Breath of the Wild can be restored when Link has paid enough rupees as tribute. Item upgrades can be made with rupees and various materials. The circlets made by the Gerudo apply various attributes to aid Link. Donating rupees in A Link to the Past grants higher carrying capacity for items. Since monsters are not actively participating in Hyrule's economy, it is fair to conclude they likely possess these for the magical properties. The rapport are the inverse of the rupee. They drain Link's wallet instead of adding money to it. It is found in Skyward Sword, Four Swords Adventures, and Phantom Hourglass. Fun fact! In Skyward Sword, they can be changed to rupees by sprinkling glittering spores on them. The circulating supply of rupees is either 1. Constantly adding more rupees in Hyrule or 2. There is a fixed supply of rupees. Dr. Wiley speculates that the total supply of rupees is printed by Picori, Bloopies, Miners, and Adventurers. If this were true, 
rupees constantly being added to the overall circulating supply would cause inflation. Inflation means more money chasing less goods and services. This causes prices to increase, similar to what we are beginning to see in many countries around the world right now. If the circulating supply is fixed, then Hyrule would experience deflation. Deflation meaning less money chasing more goods and services. The price of goods and services would plummet. There would be reduced government spending in Hyrule. Construction of new roads, bridges, and repairs to Castletown would not be invested in by the royal family. It would cause reduced spending by Hylians, causing businesses to potentially close. In Triforce Heroes, there are silver antique coins. Quote, they were issued by the Bank of Hyrule, but their era is unknown. In Majora's Mask, there are gold bars in Sakon's hideout. In Twilight Princess, Giovanni has an excess of gold coins and other precious materials. This form of currency either predates the rupee or is used alongside the rupee, just like real life gold and silver. Negative consequences of an unrestrained pursuit of wealth can lead to a focus on individual gain at the expense of the well-being of others and can contribute to social and economic inequalities. It can also lead to a disregard for the common good and a prioritization of the personal gain over the needs and concerns of the community. In this way, the depiction of society of Hyrule Castletown in Ocarina of Time as being obsessed with wealth could be seen as a cautionary tale about the dangers of greed and the negative impact it can have on the community. Those hoarding wealth are cursed, as demonstrated by many Zelda games. Giovanni is turned into a gold statue and cannot even enjoy his wealth. The family of Majora's Mask is turned into Skullshillas. Too many rupees means too much magic. Greedy people are punished brutally, unable to even live their life. The economy before Ganondorf took over the Sacred Realm is depicted as an important aspect of life for the people of Castletown. It's a bustling marketplace where people are obsessed with money and material possessions. This is reflected in the character's dialogue and the presence of shops and merchants throughout the town. There are services extending beyond basic living needs, including many game shops. It appears that the pursuit of wealth and the acquisition of rupees is a more important aspect to Highland society. The emphasis on money, prices, and trade in the marketplace suggests that the people of Hyrule Castletown place a high value on wealth and the ability to buy and sell goods and services. It is possible that the society depicted in Hyrule Castletown exhibits class differences based on the ownership and control of the modes of production, as described by philosopher and economist Karl Marx. In this system, those who own and control means of production, such as factories or other businesses, are considered to be higher class, while those who work for them and do not own the means of production are considered to be lower class. War. What is it good for? Trying to stimulate the Hyrulean economy. After Link is defeated in Ocarina of Time, the imprisoning war takes place. Ganondorf steamrolled Castletown, so basically there was not a lot of economic activity taking place. A Link to the Past has a few small shops and inns, but is nowhere near the level of prosperity Castletown reached. The most expensive item in the game is flippers, costing a whopping 500 rupees. In the Dark World, it's even worse. Kakariko Village's counterpart is called the Village of Outcasts, and is also known as Thieves Town. 
Honestly, there's no economy here. K2L suggests that sometime during this era, there was a monetary reform of the rupee, making one, a link to the past rupee, worth 10 spirit tracks rupees. This timeline is brutal in terms of war. In most of the games on this timeline, there is just a singular village and not a giant thriving economy. There does seem to be slow economic recovery overall. According to the official timeline, quote, the royal family uses the Triforce. Prosperity gives way to decline, with Hyrule reduced to a small regional power. In the original Legend of Zelda, the map is literally a wasteland with nothing but a cemetery. In Legend of Zelda 2, the map does seem to expand on what could be seen in the original with only a few small villages scattered throughout the region. However, there's no rupees or shops present in the game. No rupees means no economy. This timeline is pretty much doomed. In the child timeline, Ganondorf's plot is stopped and he is banished to the Twilight Realm. In Majora's Mask, Termina's economy does not seem to be struggling. There are even shops and minigames in Clocktown. There are events and live music. Heck, there's even a bar. Hyrule is still enjoying economic prosperity. There are many supply chain issues in Twilight Princess, though. The economy is somewhat active, as seen by the exported goat cheese and the pumpkins in Ordon Village being present in Snow Peak Ruins. Hot spring water and any metals or mined materials exported from Death Mountain would have been halted because of Darbus, just having to touch the thing. The bridge from Castletown to Hyrule Field is in need of repairs. Zant froze Zora's domain causing a water supply issue, so there are a few breaks in the supply chain causing economic strain. Link is able to actually fix the economy by making donations to the Gorons to fix the bridge to re-establish trade, melt the ice in Zora's domain, and open Malamart in Castletown. Oh, that's some pretty sick armor. What's it do? We'll come back to that. In the adult timeline, the economy in Wind Waker is shown to be in a state of decline, with prices being significantly higher in the presence of monopolies and other abusive economic practices. The sea of inflation begins to swell when Link buys his first mandatory item, the sale pricing at a steep 80 rupees. Compare this to the Ocarina Time Starter item, the Deku Shield. The bomb business holds a monopoly on bombs. 10 units are, get this, 10,000 rupees. The business deciphering the various maps charges a cool 398 rupees per map. Instead of imports and exports just being a carriage right away, now trade is limited to those owning boats. There's not many people with boats, so there is an incredibly high demand. Link takes advantage of this by doing the island trading sequence. Though, this is treated like stocks for Link. If he sells the item for a higher cost, he must pay the difference. Kind of like selling short. Beetle is still pretty cheap though. Thank you. Link can upgrade his wallet to 5,000 rupees, a full 900% higher than Ocarina Time. It doesn't help that the rare items Beetle sells are 500 to 950 rupees. There's no global united economy, which causes problems such as the monopoly and some people just having to own their own private islands. However, the economy is still depicted as an important aspect of life, with various businesses and trade routes operating through the Great Sea. Overall, the economy is an integral part of the characters' lives, with both positive and negative consequences depending on how it is managed and the actions of the people within it. In Spirit Tracks, the economy is heavily dependent on the railway system. The sea of inflation pretty much becomes a tsunami by the time new Hyrule is established. At the start of Spirit Tracks, Link can carry it up to 999 rupees, a 99% increase from Wind Waker, 
and a whopping 999% increase from Ocarina of Time. The giant amount of inflation could be from the construction of new Hyrule. The spirit tracks are gradually disappearing, causing yet another case of supply chain issues. It doesn't help that the creatures of the pirate hideout are causing mayhem to the chain either. The heart container and the quiver cost 2,000 rupees, twice as much as normal value. Beetle isn't cheap either, making his purchase point system even worse since Phantom Hourglass. To summarize, the child timeline is ravaged by war and ends with no existence of rupees. The child timeline has some supply chain issues, which are addressed by Link and Twilight Princess, but is still in a precarious situation. The adult timeline is experiencing extreme hyperinflation that is out of control. In a theory by Guy Mirai, which will be linked in the description below, he asserts that the magical armor in Wind Waker is powered by the Great Fairies. Magic, instead of rupees, is required to maintain the connection to the fairies. He came to this conclusion because of the visual similarities between the magic armor items and the spells the fairies give in Ocarina of Time. He also speculates the magic armor in Twilight Princess is drained by the same properties as the Rapport has, because the rupees in the magic armor turn black when Link's wallet is depleted. Going back to the fixed circulating supply, Twilight Princess's economy is already on shaky grounds. This armor could potentially crash Hyrule's economy. Rupees would inevitably run low and cause intense deflation. Depending on how much Link actually uses this armor. If Link was wearing this armor constantly, Hylians would run out of rupees to pay for their cost of living. Bartering would inevitably take over. This would take a lot of the control the royal family has over the kingdom. No rupees means no new roads or bridges. This means also that businesses would suffer. Think back to how the coin shortage affected Americans during the pandemic. This armor would make it worse than that. The magic armor being used often in the child's timeline could potentially fix the economy. The severe inflation due to the overwhelming amount of rupees could be eased over time with the use of the magic armor. As long as Link keeps getting hit, of course. It could take years of Link being beaten with clubs in the armor to have any lasting effects on the economy. It's just kind of funny to think about Link just taking one for the team and getting beat down for the sake of Hyrule's economy. Somehow, Hyrule outgrew the issues. In Breath of the Wild, the economy is depicted as relatively healthy. Aside from the calamity swallowing Hyrule Castle Town, of course. Before the last calamity, a hundred years before the events of the game, the economy must have been booming, with Castle Town being the center of all trade and commerce. Even so, the different races around Hyrule have good trade routes. Market Power has an excellent educational and informative look at the economy in Breath of the Wild, which you should check out in the description below. Everything follows the law of one price, which is actually relatively healthy. Everything everywhere in Hyrule is one price, meaning selling a Hylian Shroom in Gerudo Desert would cost the same price as selling it at Death Mountain. The conditions of the law of one price are 1. Free entry of supply, or in other words, Highlands to come in and supply the goods. That also means there can't be a monopoly on goods, so no one else could supply it. 2. Free movement of goods, meaning no trade frictions. No one is stopping Link bringing things in anywhere, and there obviously isn't a customs agency. 3. No trade costs. That means no embargoes, tariffs, or taxes on the products. Because of being imported and exported, the law of one price is very good for Hyrule's economy, even allowing Link to aid in setting up a whole new settlement, Terrytown, which allows people who live there to establish new shops and sell even more goods and services. Obviously, there is no confirmed placement on the timeline, so it is difficult to speculate on how the economy healed since the previous titles. It is funny to imagine Link getting beat up for years to fix the economy. Ah. 
the things you do for love. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this educational look at the economies of Hyrule, consider leaving a like, comment, or subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.